Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, here's the recording of the Women Matters of 15th of June. And our topic today would be love and fear. And I'm in the incognito, how do you say, incognito mode, because I had a big thunderstorm and I don't want um, lightning destroying my big computer. So I'm on the battery thing and hope it will hold and also the internet will hold because you never know. So in case you just continue, <laughs> when I fall out, I try to come back. Yeah, um, that's already my check-in, I would say. So <laughs> you can go on. Okay, I'll go on. Vienna is the only city in Austria where there are no thunderstorms and no rain, just sunshine. So I feel very fine. And yeah, I wonder how I will dive into the topic of today. I'm not sure yet, but yeah. I'll surprise myself. I'll pass on to Honey. Oh, thank you. I'm, it's cold with us. It's, we're in winter and it's the coldest winter ever. And it's, it caught us by surprise. So it's adapting to that big uh, seasonal change because we really didn't even have autumn. So we just went from summer to straight into really cold winter. In South Africa. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so it had a big effect on me as well. You just want to be inside and you know, bubble yourself up in a little cocoon um, because of the cold. But also nice and refreshing to go out for a walk um, in nature. And um, yeah, I have had the last 24, 36 hours, I had lots of things happening all at the same time. So I'm still trying to ground myself in it all, but I'm here. So um, that's my check. Good chat. Yeah, I'm Gertraud Wilks, living in Germany, uh, north of Frankfurt, in Gießen. Who knows that? <laughs> and um, here it's uh, for days now. It's it's raining, and nature is really like sucking it in and and I love it and our balcony is full of flowers and so so it's really good for nature because it was far too dry and I'm just coming out of a workshop this weekend uh, about we flow and this was something I uh, learned about in a workshop on the in, uh, Integral European Conference. So I was like really hooked <laughs> and booked a workshop for this weekend. Uh, yeah, how to create flow together. And it was fantabulous, <laughs> I would say. It's really, really, and I'm, I'm still like in this mode of, yeah enthusiasm and and gratefulness in all this yep so, so i'm here to... and i don't have a clue what what is going to evolve out of that theme of that topic i have a suggestion you have learned now how to create flow do create flow with us <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I mean, I think we often have a sort of a flow, no, when mm -hmm. we are talking, but uh, I find it interesting. If you want to, 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 to guide that today, the topic, what do you think about it? Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, 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 um. Um, so the first thing is to talk about an um, exciting story, something good that happened to you in the last days or so? Nice and short. <laughs> Who wants to start? I was um, in the process of having a European base in Switzerland 
and it would have only happened later in the year. And then this morning we got the news that um, it's actually going to happen much faster. So the soonest I can leave the country, I can go and visit my European home, new European home in Switzerland. So that was really good news, but also like astonishing. Didn't expect it to happen so quickly. And while I'm still here then, I will be able to stay at the ocean, which I love, till I go. So that's my view, that's my happy story. <laughs> well, as I started before already, before we started uh, recording, I had a very exciting morning because I decided that to create joy out of myself would be much less energy wasting than depending on the mood of somebody else or the constitution or the, uh, yeah, the attitude. And I told that person and now I feel enormously relieved. I feel almost free and I didn't notice that because I love him so much, but uh, I feel, yeah, I feel great now. Yeah, I can tell about yesterday. I had a surprise. It was a, a woman I met in a breakout group in, uh, in the German speaking hub of uh, Gaia, the Otto Schama uh -huh. uh, journey. Uh -huh. And uh, sh she said then, oh, that would be nice if we met again. And I said, yes, let's do it. We exchanged emails. And then uh, she wrote and I said, oh, I have to prepare for the conference and I, I have just no, no mental energy free for to, you know. And I completely forgot. And uh, the other day, two days ago, three days ago, she wrote again. And she said, oh, can, can't we meet? And so we met yesterday. And it was so exciting. We talked an hour and a half. And I want to bring her into the German um, Brunnengespräche. Mm -hmm. uh, she, it was so, so many similarities and parallels in, in her and me that was just surprising. It was so exciting to, to meet new people and to find an immediate understanding because there are so many parameters which are similar and that's I, I was I was really excited and you Gertrude yeah I already told a story about my workshop yesterday and and out of this it was really like practical I, I mean really like uh, on the ground and it was not just feeling good it was actually uh, to get the concept for my I'm, I'm creating an online course about appreciation and so I got the concept uh, within an hour or so really like um, um, from source I mean listening into my inner wisdom and not like <laughs> trying to <laughs> in German we would say break my head um, yeah that was really great and um, so some wonderful things happened out of this. Yes, and the next step would be to say what mood are you in and what is your desired mood for this hour? What's your current mood and what is your desired mood? Hanili, do you want to go or who oh, wants? Lots of excitement, um, also nervousness <laughs> because of everything happening at the same time and to jump into the flow. Um, so that, but the excitement and the inner energy is bubbling up and the desired mood is for that to flow naturally. Great, thanks. Um, my desired mood would be to be creative, inspiring, <laughs> uh, surprising myself, 
and I'm in a very light mood. So I, I really I, I'm in a joyful mood. And seeing you all just makes me more joyful. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So, hi. Yeah, I'm a little bit sort of tired now after the storm is more or less over. And I have my cat here and I'm, she is 17 and a half. And oh. I'm stroking her. And the dog is still lying down. He is so, she is so afraid of thunderstorms. And um, my desired mood is getting out of this sort of tiredness and this sort of a little bit, oh, you know, uh, which comes after some tension has been uh, overcome. So. And what would that be if you come out? Yeah, that I, I don't feel tired. I don't feel my eyes like, you know, sort but? of. That might also be the lights, but anyway. And that I, I, I feel more than I already feel this inspiration, this mm -hmm. joy to be together. I still have, I already have it, but it's more underneath a, a sort of a cover, you know, mm -hmm. and I want to be on, on top, let's say. The lid off. Yeah. For me, it's a little bit nervous because you just said, okay, do it. Um, and um, there's some excitement and joy. And the desired mood is um, being smooth with it. And um, yeah, joyful. Even talking about fear. <laughs> so, um, we could ask ourselves if we, even with that topic, take about, let's say, 70% or not more than 70% seriousness and... 100% playfulness. Would that be okay with you? Well, I'm not a mathematician, but this is 170. We should take ourselves and the topic too seriously, and uh, that playfulness can come in just yep. all it's the way. Right there. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Heidi? I cannot see anything, so... Oh, you okay. To... So you cannot see me. I'm, yeah, I'm incognito. You know, that's fine, because normally I'm always in the front. Now <laughs> yeah. I can stay behind. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, I'm... I love I love to to be in a joyful mood and uh, for my Enya type I'm always too serious so okay. I hope you get me a little bit uh, okay. less serious. So um, and and could we agree on uh, being taken by surprise or even heart blown and mind blown by ourselves by whatever? <laughs> Great. And that if we have assumptions that we post them as open questions. So that we don't take them as <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> but it's great, great. So the next question is what would be your happiest dream for this, for this hour meeting? And maybe beyond, <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> well, my happiest dream would be to be wide awake. Mm -hmm. So, because uh, I'm trying myself with lucid dreaming and I'm really frustrated right now. So being wide awake would be just perfect. <laughs> Hanili is like, <laughs> it's, it's almost bursting out. <laughs> uh, it's living the dream for me. 
It's being the dream. Mm. So there's no differentiation between the dream and reality. For me, it's just inspiration. <laughs> for, for me, it's, it's inspiration and not being nervous anymore. I mean, like being in this conversation with you without thinking about, oh, I have to do this. So, yeah, and, and really looking forward to so it's open for for this topic as how do i fulfill on my happiest dream by talking about that subject of love versus fear You're asking that's very suitable because my happiest dream is to co-create together with others a life abundance, joyful and possibility reality. So it's at the center of it, the essence of it. So that makes me even more excited. And I feel it in my heart space. There's something going on. Great. Uh, today I finally formed the sentence that your will power is a very essential part of it. So um, to decide against fear and for love, you need Yes, you need to be brave and grace and grit, but uh, it's always to decide for love and against fear for me now. Because what kind of fear? It's, it's, it's you are afraid, afraid that you may lose your love, your capacity to love. And yeah, that's not true, because I want to love, and I want to be open, and I want uh, to embrace you all, <laughs> and even the people who are afraid of loving. But I have to let them be what they are, and what they can do. So this was the decision I made this morning, and yeah. Still feels good. <laughs> so when I thought about the topic last time, we talked about love and hate. And what I realized uh, reading and hearing that the opposite of love is not hate, but fear. So I was thinking about that, that fear is in the way of love. And Monia, you say you can decide against fear. And I think up to a certain point, it might be true, but how is this decision? It cannot be a mental decision because fear is an emotion. So uh, I'm wondering how to, to do that, how to decide against fear or how to, in other words, overcome the fear when it appears because it is just gripping you no? when it comes. And so I would be interested in practices I mean, I have some, but maybe they are not so effective. Uh, how, how to do that? How to come back into, into love when, when the emotions get you? And emotions, they move. And let's be moved even by fear into the right direction. That's what I thought. So when I listen Gertrude, that's again that you, we can't hear you. What has happened? Oops. Is it now? Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
I, I'm not sure if there's anything but love. In, um, in German, angst is enge, it's being narrow. And uh, one day somebody said, uh, angst, so angst is only uh, squeezed love. <laughs> it's like, and what Heidi said was um, this being overtaken by, by fear. I think there is, for me, there's a different fear. It's, it's about like making up my mind and being concerned and about this and that. This is, or there is this thinking already or still there. But overtaken by fear is like fear of death, fear of as if a sable tooth tiger is right in front of me like in the old, <laughs> old days. So, um, so I think they're different things like immediate fear of survival. Like in mobbing, I, I already think that this is also the case. So it, it feels like survival. And, and this concerning whatever goes on. And yeah. do I have to, to move places because is it too bad? Oh, it's okay. Okay. I just wanted to agree with you what I was talking about when I uh, hear a noise which I don't uh, know and uh, it wakes me up out, out of the of, at night. Then I, <gasps> yeah, I have this, you know, and I have to get my, <laughs> with breathing, get me down again. And sometimes I go out and see last time it was six wild pigs <laughs> <laughs> being right in front of my bedroom, you know? And when you are in deep sleep, then th this attack of fear, which is really, I think the ancient fear, you know, which you cannot decide uh, not to have it. I think it's just like this why the other one what you are talking about is when you are telling yourself stories they bring you into fear this i i do agree that you can decide not to not to indulge in them and to deviate <laughs> yourself go all the way to to that other fear yeah. mm -hmm. if i listen to you correctly heidi when you get into action, you overcome your fear. So that widens you. And this is the same as me. So I, uh, I have to move and maybe just inwardly, but I have to move from where I'm held. And yeah, breathing helps. Breathing is just the ultimate key to being in my opinion, and not only my opinion, <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, it's, I guess the tendency towards love is just that draws you to be wide, and nobody likes to be kept uptight with one's own emotions, for example. So changing one's emotions is to me an act of willpower, an act, an action, again, yeah. doing mm -hmm. something. What you just said is, is really like this expansion from this squeezed mode. I mean, you're really physically like squeezed. And this is this adrenaline flush through your body that needs physical something. This is not a mental thing, it's a physical thing and you really have to get it out. And one very good thing is laughter. So if you laugh, uh, the body says, uh, here, what? <laughs> it can't be. So if people laugh, they cannot be frightful. So it's, it's, it's just physiologically dims the, the adrenaline. So. So I think playfulness helps a lot. <laughs> and that's 
also an action. And, and I was thinking emotion means it puts you into motion, no? So when you get the right motion, then uh, you can get distance from the frightening uh, as aspect of, let's say, almost any emotion which comes and gets you, you know? By, by doing something, you can get out of the, at least of the grip. I once learned that even smiling. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we did as an exercise at this. Uh, this already gets you in a different mood. I don't want to be around like this. So. Yeah, fake it till you make it, yeah. Yeah, and I think for, um, for me, the one is danger, like you described with the tiger. That's real danger. You can be killed. Like you say, either you wake up in the middle of the night, there's noise, you don't know what it is. It's, a, it's in that bringing that adrenaline up. Where the other fear is a, a perception of something that causes you to be not in a comfortable position. And um, as you are all now sharing, it, it, it is that real inner calmness. Yeah, whether it's breathing, laughing, smiling, moving, but also to realize it's just an energy. You know, it's just, we give it a charge, we give it a name, we say it's fear, for example, our reaction towards something. But in the end, it's just the energy. But it's our association with the energy that causes the discomfort, the fear, how to speak, because we have a frame of reference for it. So the moment we can let go of that frame of reference and maybe just look at it in a different way, through the movement, through that motion, because we change our position to it when we move through it, whether it's internal or external, then it, change, then it starts to transform. And it's a lower brain activity in our, in our brains as well. And like storytelling, laughter, all those things lives in, in our parts of our brains, for example, as well. We are good, feel good and more hormones are sitting. Um, and the silliness as well, just to laugh at ourselves, look at me, not, not without being disrespectful to ourselves because of how we responded to something, but just to have some, some um, humor towards ourselves as well, just to take us out of it. Because in the end, it's just an energy of and how we react to it and respond to it. But I think you have to train that there is something you, you need to practice because when it gets you in the middle of the night, you can just say, ah, okay, <laughs> let's get that out. But if you never trained that in a conscious mode, a mode then you don't have it. So I, I think what um, Monia said, it, it's a decision. So you, you have to decide it in a conscious <laughs> way and then practice it and have it at hand if it overcomes you or overtakes you and what is important to practice it with uh, lighter levels of of fear because otherwise mm -hmm. you're getting so contracted then it's very difficult to get out without any body uh, work or something so first the physical contraction needs to be worked on before you can decide with your imagination to, to, to do something, you know. I actually, when I have this, I normally breathe in and then I let the whole out breath through the whole body and I tell myself, let all the energy which is not good out and put it into to the earth. And normally it takes two or three times when it is uh, really heavy, then it takes months, sometimes five, six, seven times. And then I really feel the, the shift of, uh, it's not so, it, it's, it's really a different feeling in, 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 in the heart space uh, when, when it has shifted. So not only the, the heartbeat, but also the whole feeling is, is different. And then I'm relieved. Uh, but I feel or and i feel uh, that changing your the body position uh, really helps so if you're just slumped and then when you 
get up or just yeah change the position of your body so that's a physical thing but uh, it helps as well and then you can start breathing but first <laughs> jump out of bed and just <laughs> try to find out yeah you muted Gertrude yeah sorry I had to uh, when the weather is bad this the connection is bad so I had to change rooms when you do this smiling is not so easy but when you do that it's a lot easier so so I think body posture that does a lot I'm thinking about my mother. She always smiled like this, and sometimes I catch myself too. It is becoming a mask, you know, like it, like to hide what is really going on, you know. And so, yeah, smiling, yes, but really smiling. <laughs> yeah, and and moving. I mean, Gertrude, you love dancing, no? That would be a good thing. I still feel awkward to dance alone, so in my room, but. <laughs> Maybe I go on the on the on the bike on the on the spinning wheel or something to move the body, or go for a walk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and talking about love, it's it's more this this expansive feeling and integrating. So. I think they're different. So I love my children. I love my, but love as such is an expensive feeling, something that widens. And that could bring fear too. <laughs> like if you feel your heart expanding and all of a sudden, <gasps> so. Uh, Heidi, have you ever tried Qigong? This might help too. Instead I of do, dancing, but just yeah, uh, I do before going to bed. I do ten minutes of qigong, turning around, and well, dance. there you go. That's a dance. Yeah, it's sort a dance. of a dance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but at night I actually don't want to wake up. I want to sleep again immediately, so I don't jump out because then I would be really awake. So I just do the breathing and. And so far, no wild pig has eaten me yet. But it, it was a long time of exercise, I have to say. And I can tell you a story that, uh, because I noticed that when I hear noises and then I enter into my stories, what could it be, worst scenarios and everything. And so at a certain point, I decided whatever it is, I will get up and look for it. And one night, it's now 15, 20 years ago, I don't know, uh, I went out, it was a metallic noise, really strange, you know, and then I thought, what is that? No, you go out, you go out. And then you know what it was? In those times, I still fed my cats here nearby and in, in these metallic pots, and there was a, a and the, 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 the metal ball was sort of <laughs> dingling forwards and backwards. And that was for me the key moment. I said, I always will look out and see what it is because otherwise you don't sleep the night over. You know? But when you know what it is, then no problem. And that has been my, my how do you say, my guideline since then. Whenever is fear, look what it is about. <laughs> yeah, that's again the courage you have to to have courage mm -hmm. and will and the decision to to use it. I think there is. Um, in this mode when you're not taken over by fear and have to do it physically that if there's adrenaline in the air <laughs> and, and, and fear coming up then I think what you said Monia it's a choice 
it's a choice to go with the adrenaline and go this path and really go down the tube or to um to go the other way and i think there is one part is um that you can let go of things like um i think um what do you call it when cheating in business so um that most of this appeared because the bosses said something and the lower people uh, didn't didn't counter they didn't so to make it and and fulfill your your desired whatever no matter what this is really adrenaline and and um, and fear comes up that you might not fulfill on the on the numbers or anything like that and the other part is connection being connected to people going into connection and really have some yeah like with neighbors with friends um and and going more into the oxytocin than the adrenaline thing and i think that's that's a choice to to say i go with joy i go with connection i don't um yeah i'm not more than 70 percent sincere <laughs> with whatever so i i think that's really a choice And I think also it's who we surround ourselves with, like you said, Gertrude, your, you know, the, the, your connections and the people around you and the type of stories you get engaged in that can take you down the rabbit hole if you already interfere. So it just bolts onto it. So to be, be really discerning of what you allow into your space, generally speaking, um, in your sphere of influence and contact as well, because that will bolt onto it. If you have, you know, is something you are fearful of, and then somebody else tells a story, and you just latch on, you just make it grow, and it comes back to the decision again to say, "I'm not putting my attention to this. It's not good for me." And self care, and self love to say it's actually okay to feel what I feel. I'm not ignoring it, but I choose something different. There's also not suppression of the whatever feeling and fear is present. Because then that then that will just come into it, have its own story later, but to see it for what it is and then make a choice, and to feel into that. So one of you mentioned the heart space. It's to feel into it. So it's a heart space that you choose into where everything, anything is possible, and not just this one thing that's happening. You see, that's the end of the world now. I'm wondering about the not suppressing thing. We were educated to suppress almost everything which is coming up. So how can we be sure that we don't suppress the things when we decide against it? Well, in my experience, if we acknowledge you, you we become aware of it. I'm feeling this now. And to allow ourselves to feel it deeply, but not to get attached to it. And then to release it and let it go. And then to make the other choice. You already made the choice, but you allow yourself. It's also a choice to feel it, but not to make it grow and to give it a story. So there's not a mental story to it. And then we release it and then we choose something different. So we don't suppress it. Yeah, thank you. I think this is crucial that we always uh, create stories, interpretations immediately. We don't uh, make a distinction between perception and story or perception and interpretation that we have to learn to really separate that. And I see that's very little in awareness of people that they don't, you know, that they don't separate it, that they think their story is the perception and 
I'm, I'm in front of this enigma, how to explain or how to help people to see that. You know, I'm thinking about a concrete uh, um, case I, I will uh, try to do. And I'm not sure how, how to do that. If, if somebody is not aware of that, do you have an idea how to, how to allow people to see that's not the same? <laughs> Byron Katie has a beautiful um, practice. It's a very simple practice that she, te that she teach people. Um, so you ask the person to look in the mirror. Look at you, look at you while, while you're fearful. What, so what do you look like? I think I'm saying it wrong now, but you, yeah, you look at yourself uh, when you're fearful, then you look at what fear looks like. And then you look at yourself without fear. And it's three distinct different faces that you see in the mirror. So your, your association in your, in your mind of what do I look like when I'm fearful or angry or whatever it might be. And then to stand back and see what does anger look like? It's not you, it's an emotion, for example. And then to look at yourself, what, what do you look like without the emotion? And then you make, your mind can immediately make that connection then. Oh, this is what I look like with the emotion and without it. But that we can distance ourselves from because we are not it. I am angry means I am it, but it's actually not true. I'm experiencing the emotion. I'm a human being, an infinite soul. And once we can see that then, it's okay to then feel it because I'm just feeling this. I'm just experiencing this charged energy. And then, then we can distance ourselves slowly from it to that that stories are not linked to it and that we can also just see who we are without it. And the face looks much different without it than with it. So the mind can immediately make that decision and see. This is like biofed, uh, biofed feedback. Yeah, and it's very much like Buddhism. Mm. You are not your emotions, so yeah. Are you a Buddhist? <laughs> I think there is one more other aspect to it. If it became a pattern a long time ago that um, you could call it shadow or something that is trapped in a, in a specific age and, and it's reoccurring. And um, so just doing the work, like you said, it, it, it's a one-time thing, but it didn't resolve or didn't uh, get the shadow, mostly it doesn't get the shadow fully removed by, by getting it in this moment. So I think that there's also some work to be done to, to realize those shadows and turn it around like, what did I get out of this? Like, what strengths did I build up? Because I had to go through this. So, and, and then going from there and say, okay, what is it that I really want? And then tell that story and go with your body, with your emotions towards what you want and not what you don't want. But first you have to really get what the pattern is and how to turn it around and how to appreciate what got out of it. Like my, my daughter who is dyslexic has an elephant memory. <laughs> so, and, and she, she managed it to, to do her masters and, but that was not visible at the moment when she had those difficulties at the beginning. Nobody knew what, what was the case. So I think there is also uh, um, a reoccurring thing that brings us fear from the past that we're still going through with certain triggers.
And I think this is exactly also part of what I'm talking about because that's also because we don't distinguish between presentation because it so has become so normal by experience in the past that this means that. And uh, so it's automatic sort of, and we have to really slow that down to, to realize, oh no, it doesn't can, but it doesn't need to. So, yeah. From an emotional level, um, it also goes back to a lot of our limbic injuries in our brain when we were born. You know, coming into the world, it can create a subconscious fear that we're not even aware of. Um, if we were, if the birth was traumatic for the for the baby, and it's something that it's only in the last two decades that we begin to understand the impact of those those uh, injuries on our limbic part of our brains. And the limbic part is all about our emotional reactions. Um, so it goes back to that as well, to see it's not such a bad thing necessarily. Um, and that we can work through it, like you said, Gertrude, that we can do um, work on that part. And to get more in a healthy state of being that way as well, to respond to the world, to see it for what it is. Um, that doesn't keep us trapped in a situation, which is very empowering as well. And then it comes back to movement, Monia, like you said, and you get through it as well. You, you begin, if you use your body to move through it, you don't have to think about the story. The, bo the body is very powerful in that way. I'm very going very deep lately into the archetypes of the souls of the soul and so that's that's meant what we need to do i mean we come here with a certain task it's not that we have to get rid of these things because these are qualities with which we come as a task to explore them and uh, when we start wanting to eliminate certain emotions or certain things in in our life that doesn't really work but to learn how to handle them. And I, I, I find that's a very good um, idea of how to live, not to, to fight against with what is our disposition, but to learn to <laughs> live with them in a good way. It's amazing that we are talking all the time about how to handle fear. But have we ever talked about how we handle love? We did huh. that last time. I had the same question in my mind, just I wanted to ask it. Thank you, Monia. Well, okay, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, you, it's your turn. No, no. Hmm. Well, my experience is that sometimes people are afraid of love so it's a just a, as much of a challenge as fear is i am one of those people who have have had problems the whole life because i guess that i was not surrounded by love in my childhood and so it just as soon as love came here i could for the beginning and then I sort of withdraw. I wonder if that is something of the unknown. At least here we know. And if love is so we just have a glimpse of it, would it really, <laughs> what's really possible? But Monia, when you asked that question, all of our faces went into big smiles <laughs> immediately. <laughs> it shows you the power of it. <laughs> From where we were and suddenly 
the huge expressions of joy and feelings of love. So we all lit up automatically just by the talk, by the, by hearing it. Yeah, my mother, when I was a child, my mother always told me in German, sei vernünftig, Moni, which probably would be reasonable or be rational. And so this was some of the, that was how I was imprinted, to be reasonable. And when I dared to be unreasonable, I had the greatest time of my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I really mean it was just ecstasy and yeah, joy. So you have to, as we integrals know, we you have to look at your shadows and learn to live with them and get their energy gradually. I was thinking of an expression that I really liked uh, what Heidi said, uh, grant them being <laughs> these other emotions, to, to grant them being, not to fight against them, but just let them be and, <laughs> and then decide or choose where, it, where to go. So because many people try to fight against it and, and so it's just, getting that soft, <laughs> that soft space in which I can choose. And... This yeah. is the huge achievement if we can do that. It's really huge. I wonder if we could, I mean, we put it on, on fear and dealing with it and overcoming it and all this, if we could ponder on love next time, just so like do that <laughs> expansive thing and and because once i think it's it's appropriate to say how, how to overcome because it's it's our evolutionary yeah brain thing <laughs> that um to deal with it but I, I think we need more time to explore that part so yeah i agree May I ask you where you landed with your happiest dream? So we, are you happy with, with what came out of this session? Um, what I mean is, is you said what your happiest dream for this hour is and now I wanted to know where you landed with it. So. I can uh, answer. I'm alive. I'm not tired anymore. So, and I'm present. And, and uh, I think that's what I wanted to be. So, thank you, Gertrud. Okay. Yeah, my dream also. I, I was very wide awake and inspired by what you said and could just get in resonance. And we have a terrific topic for next time. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and as, as you always, always sharing, I just looking at your faces and seeing you, I just felt, I felt love all the time, no matter what we shared. And I'm deeply grateful for that with you girls. Um, so thank you. So living my, living my reality, yes. Great. And my, my dream was not to be nervous anymore and not to, to think much about <laughs> because I really felt that we were reson resonating with each other. I was not something special out of this. I, I really felt, felt um, in this together. And that, that is great. Yeah, I liked it. So... And the last Thank round you. is to appreciate yourself or to acknowledge yourself for whatever and at least one person in this round. So that's our closing round. Can I first acknowledge somebody else? 
<laughs> I wanted to say to Haneli, you were talking about our faces, but look at yours all the time. That's like <laughs> the sun in <laughs> tenfold <laughs> shining. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Just being with you all, it's really, it's so nurturing and so nourishing and stimulating. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And appreciating not one of you, all of you. And feeling you, my body, is very precious. Thank you. And in myself, to be here, to make it a priority to be with you girls every second week. Thank you. I'm always wondering that we are so different, each of us is, but together it sort of forms, uh, yeah, it forms a very delicious meal, <laughs> <laughs> a four, a four course <laughs> meal. <laughs> and yeah, and I always wanted to thank Heidi for setting the table for us. <laughs> And f and Gertrude for giving us a menu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Hani just enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, I always look at her face too. <laughs> it's just <laughs> yeah. And thank you all. And I thank you and appreciate the cooking of the meal together, the co-creating, four people in the kitchen. <laughs> no, it's really great. I also feel very much nourished by that. And thank you, Gerda, that you did that. That's great. And you do it next time too, please, with love. Okay, okay. <laughs> I um. Let me appreciate myself. That yes. I find that it's no problem for me to give away the leadership. You know, that's it's. I'm happy if somebody else is doing something. And when I did that, and I thought, oh, why not? Can we do that always? Why should I? I mean, I do the intro and the closing because it's because I organize it. But the rest, why should I always be there and see? You know, check the <laughs> the boxes. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate myself for jumping in. It was like <laughs> sharing said, "Okay, do it." So, so I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm happy how it turned out, and I appreciate each of you. I, this is like Monia said; it's really this, this, this quality that is so, at the same time, different, but also in a way overlapping and um, and uh, thank you Heidi for, I mean, this is three years or four years <laughs> that you have kept that that thread. It's really amazing for, for that consistency and for your love to put in that into, yeah. You know, one of my qualities uh, in, in the soul matrix is Ausdauer. Ausdauer in English, what is this? Persistency? Persistence, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you see, obviously, I'm, I'm without knowing that it is one of my main qualities, uh, I, I'm doing it. So I'm glad yeah. that I do. Yeah. And that. Yeah, that we also, you know, always when we come into a sort of, let's say, crisis that the, the, the we say in German, the air is out of the balloon, which happens after a while. And then there come new people in and then we are, we are like inspired again. That's always uh, yeah. wonderful, super wonderful. <laughs> when, I, when, I, when I see you have that connection between thoughtfulness and and this joyful that heart coming out so mm -hmm. that's that's really what i what i love mm -hmm. and hanley it's just being joy it's this <laughs> Stop it. with your full being and your full body it's, it's, <laughs> it's 
really contented. <laughs> Thank you. So I hand it over to Heidi to close the yeah, thank you. I think we have done the checkouts and next time I hope I will be visible again. I one of my false beliefs is I'm invisible and today I played it out. <laughs> almost. You are almost invisible today. <laughs> <laughs> but the thunderstorm is over, so now I could have gone to the other computer. But no problem. We see again and we will talk about love and thank you for the wonderful inspirational collaboration do we have a date already do we thank have you. a date two weeks two weeks two weeks, no. two weeks. 29. Okay. Yeah, 29. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay yeah and today I got a glimpse of what i did <laughs> what i had <laughs> <laughs> okay bye-bye okay. have thank a good day, day.